Thank you, Councilman Waring and City Council. Diane Barker, District 7. I'd like to talk about process and I would like to have my councilman take it to heart that maybe that you would convene with a task force or whatever you can in the process as you saw tonight even that a citizen Pat Vint is um, had a talking to by the police department for an alleged way that he spoke with you. Um, I have seen a pattern at the city of Phoenix and uh, it, the thing is, is there are processes where the city uh, has not solved a person's problem when they've had to go to court and uh, the person has dealt either because they didn't have money or couldn't get representation. As a pro per and the law department has written orders that the judges sign and the party gets no time to object because they didn't get a copy. Well. Uh, citizen Haskell Wexler ended up with a warrant from the law department. He was an older man. He was not uh, belligerent. Through some, I wasn't there, some alleged thing he said to the law department. And he spent three days at, in, when he was in his 70s in Sheriff Joe's jail before I could find out he was there. And then I went and got him out. This is wrong. We need to solve problems. I want to know who put the order on Patrick Vint and under what authority that you blocked him from the city's emails. I have conclusive proof. I've been up in the clerk's office, and the only way that you receive this email, if I make a reply, and Sal DeCicio's office replied to me, but they couldn't get anything from Mr. Vint now. The thing about it is if you're going to do things, there should be a notification to the person why they're doing it under what law and ordinance. The other thing I brought up earlier about the city not going to MAG, and maybe if Mr. Zerker spoke to you that they had Tom Reeves, Mr. Reeves came late, I gave him my seat there. And the thing about it is, is and he left early. The point of it is, is that the city of Phoenix is the big dog, and this year the grant recipient, you, I've said this before, Meg is to a T, reports what people say, whether they like it or not, and we're getting them to do things for the citizenry, even though they don't have the jurisdiction that you do. They're a voluntary organization. My point of it is, this has got to stop. I'd like to have you look into ethics, why the city council has not adopted anything alleged. It's because you don't want to lose your lunches. Now, that's small. I have paperwork here and been there that even that body of attorneys that made the orders for you and everything, they didn't allow the citizens to speak properly there. And Mr. Brown was there. I am not happy with the city law department. The city law department is supposed to have the best ethic of any attorneys and the way they discounted my asking you for a deposition is wrong. Thank I you, was Diane. a good employee and much. I'm just letting you know that if the city does not get the paperwork for the deposition, we Frank Zuckerberg, thank you. Good afternoon, Council. My name is Frank Zuckerberg. Um, I've been driving a Phoenix bus going on 37 years, and I'm currently the Vice President of um, Amalgamated Transit Union, Local 1433. And before I start, I would respectfully like to request if we could put the um, city transit RFP on the agenda for the next city meeting. Um, that would be very much appreciated so that we would actually be able to vent out and to be able to discuss in detail our concerns about the RFP. So if I'm not sure how, how I'm supposed to do that, but is this request su sufficient? Can you... Uh can you respond to that? Sure, Vice Mayor, members of the council, the transit RFP closed today and, and uh, uh, respondents were due to submit their uh, responses today. It'll be vetted by the staff and then in the spring, February or March, it will be brought to the city council for uh, recommendation and would be on the agenda at that time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I would like to say that being a bus driver going on 37 years, that this is probably the worst deterioration of the system that uh, I have ever seen. I started driving the bus when we were on Watkins Road. 
um, we have a transit center on Central Avenue called the uh, Pastor Transit Center. And, um, you know, the bus operators can't use the bathroom there. We have a brand new central station. <laughs> on weekends, these operators call me up and they're saying, Frank, what do we do? Well, the bathrooms are locked for the bus drivers. I mean, you know, we recently went to Denver and like, you know, there's accommodations and this is the only, only place that uh, I could remember since recent that like, you know, that bus drivers can't have um, a facility to use a restroom after going for a, a one hour trip. Um, on First Transit West, on, on the west side, they're waiting an, a year and a half for a, a RFP to get an ice machine. That's the only transit property in the whole valley where operators can't even get ice. Um, over on uh, Veolia, on the um, uh, south side, they just finally got us a vending machine. They charged three dollars for a bag of, um, you know, pretzels or potato chips, and um, you know, you know, the city pulled out all of the vending machines. And it just seems like everything that they do is a worsening of our working conditions. Whereas, like you know, it didn't used to be like that. We used to give the citizens courtesy stops. If somebody was short money, we would help them out. We would give them a ride. What happens if somebody puts in five and a half dollars into the fare box? And, and it's $6 to get an all-day pass. Well, drive us all the money I got. What do we do? If, the, if I'm picking him up over in Sunny Slope and he has to go to, uh, to Mesa, you know, do we give him a courtesy pass or do we tell him, well, that's the rule? Um, so, like, you know, every time the city comes out with a new rule, it's a worsening of the working conditions. And, you know. Thank you very much. We really appreciate your time. Thank, thank you. you. Bobby Price. <coughs> Is Bobby Price here? Okay, we don't have any other cars. Anybody else wish to speak? I would, can I make a request? Yeah, um, yes, I assume so. I would like to look at the language of the RFP. And I would like us, I would like to look at uh, several pieces of the language of the RFP. Thank you, yes, uh, gentlemen, if you would just fill out a card, maybe after you're done speaking. Good afternoon. I'll make it short and sweet. My name is Bob Bean. I'm the president of the Amalgamated Transit Union here in Phoenix. Most of you know me, have seen me. And just to reiterate on Mr. what Mr. Zuckerberg was saying, the conditions for the bus operators and even the light rail operators are deplorable in the city. That was unintentional, I apologize. Uh, do we have a problem with the microphone? Got it, okay, it should be good, go ahead. Yeah, our, our operators, in a lot of cases, are actually a f forced to wear depends because they cannot get from one point to another and use restrooms in a timely manner. The companies don't care because it's all about the profit. If the operators have to soil themselves, so be it. Like Frank was saying, on the weekends, Central Station, Ed Pastor Transit Center, there's nothing. They've got to hope that they can find a Circle K on the way down and run in. And that's if Circle K will let them in to use their washrooms. Our operators suffer out there every day. And these are the people that are hauling your parents, your grandchildren, your wives, your brothers, your sisters around town. And it's not just the bus, it's light rail as well. We've had light up rail operators that have soiled themselves because they were not able to find a washroom to use from Sycamore to Montebello, which is a 63-minute trip. So that's all I got to say. Thanks. Thank you very much. Meeting officially adjourned.